If the early universe had followed our current scientific playbook, galaxies wouldn't have had time to grow larger than a few space pebbles by half a billion years post Big Bang. But guess what? The universe had other plans and it's showing them off with attitude. Remember what the famous American physicist Michio Kaku said not too long ago? Well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy like the Milky Way galaxy with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. There should not be primordial galaxies that are bigger than the Milky Way galaxy that are only half a billion years old. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. Yeah, he warned us. And guess what? It's happening. The Webb Telescope has officially thrown a wrench into everything we thought we knew about the early universe. Let me break it down. For decades, astronomers told us that it takes billions, yes, billions of years to form a galaxy like our Milky Way, which holds around 100 billion stars. Makes sense, right? Building a cosmic city of that scale shouldn't happen overnight. But then along comes Webb, peering deep into the past and... Surprise, it spots not one, not two, but six galaxies that were already massive just 500 million years after the Big Bang. Hold up, did you catch that? Half a billion years after the universe was born, these galaxies are up to 10 times larger than the Milky Way? This should not be possible under our current understanding of cosmic evolution. Something in our big, beautiful theory of the universe is way off. And now, cosmologists might need to rip up some pages in those physics textbooks and start fresh. Fast forward to now, over two years since Webb's jaw-dropping launch, and astronomers are living their dream. They're uncovering secrets left and right. But at the same time, they've opened up a Pandora's box of cosmic puzzles. And the latest? Oh boy, Webb has once again turned its eye to the dawn of time, the first 500 million years after the Big Bang. But instead of finding baby galaxies just starting out in life, it's finding galactic giants that seem way too advanced for their age. Meet GZ9P3. This galaxy is sitting at a redshift of 9.3, meaning we're seeing it as it existed just 510 million years after the Big Bang. And what do we find? Billions, and I mean billions, of stars already formed. Now here's the kicker. Hubble had actually seen this galaxy before, but back then, it was just a weird, faint blip on the screen. Nobody had any idea it was a cosmic behemoth hiding in plain sight, until Webb zoomed in and said, surprise. And what did Webb see? Not only is GZ9P3 massive, it's also suspiciously mature for something so close to the beginning of time. This galaxy somehow skipped the awkward teen years of cosmic development and jumped straight to adulthood. So here's what the Discovery team saw when they zoomed in on GZ9P3, that ancient galaxy we're just talking about. Inside it, two bright spots. Not one, two. That's a cosmic red flag for something dramatic, a galactic collision. <laughs> yup, two baby galaxies in the early universe literally smashed into each other to form one giant one. But that's just the beginning. The researchers didn't stop at size and shape, they actually peeked into the very stellar population of GZ9P3. And what did they find? A bunch of hot young stars lighting up the place like a cosmic disco party. But wait, it gets even more intense. They found older stars too, which were rich in elements like silicon, carbon, and iron. Quick science detour, Iron is the heaviest element stars can create before they explode as supernovae. So if these old stars are packed with iron, it means they lived, died, and spread heavy elements into the galaxy very early in the universe's history. In simpler terms, this galaxy didn't just grow up fast, it graduated early, got a job, and started raising families before the universe had even figured out how to tie its shoelaces. Even more surprising, there are more old stars in GZ9P3 than anyone expected. That's big, because it tells us the universe was chemically maturing way faster than the models predicted. The stars weren't just forming quickly, they were already enriching space with metals, 
setting the stage for newer generations of stars. So now scientists are scratching their heads. If galaxies could become this massive and this chemically evolved so soon after the Big Bang, our current models might not be entirely wrong, but they're clearly missing something big. The timeline of galaxy growth may be way off. And speaking of things not adding up, let's talk about the bigger crisis in cosmology. You may have heard about it. The universe isn't behaving like it's supposed to. We've built our grand model of the cosmos on observations, theories, and math that has worked. Until now. One of the biggest red flags, something called the Hubble tension. Here's the deal. We've got two main ways of measuring how fast the universe is expanding, what's known as the Hubble constant. One way looks at the cosmic microwave background, basically the afterglow from when the universe was a newborn, just 380,000 years old. That gives us one expansion rate. The second way uses supernovae, stellar explosions so bright they act as standard candles. By measuring how bright they should be and comparing it to how bright they actually look, we calculate another expansion rate. Sounds neat, right? Except those two methods give different answers and not just slightly different, significantly different. That mismatch is what cosmologists call the Hubble tension. And now the web comes in like a galactic detective with new clues that only deepen the mystery. Its latest observations don't just raise questions about the expansion rate, they hint that galaxies were forming sooner, faster, and smarter than we thought possible. It's like trying to solve a puzzle and suddenly realizing someone handed you pieces from a completely different box. Some cosmologists are even saying it's not just a Hubble crisis anymore, it's a full-blown identity crisis for the universe. So where does that leave us? With awe, with confusion, with a lot of equations being erased and reworked. But most of all, with the realization that the universe is still full of surprises and that the more we discover, the more we realize we're just scratching the surface. <laughs> you know what? I welcome all this chaos, really, because this, this confusion, this contradiction is how science moves forward. We ask questions, the universe throws curveballs, and in trying to catch them, we end up learning more. Now, when you look up at a clear night sky, assuming you're not stuck in a light polluted city, what do you see? Stars, countless stars. And if you're lucky, you might even catch the faint smudge of the Andromeda galaxy hovering out there. It's a reminder. The universe isn't just sprinkled with stars, it's packed with galaxies. But that raises a big question. Just how much of the universe is filled with matter? How lumpy or smooth is everything spread out? Sounds simple, right? Yeah, not even close. Here's the twist. Our current observations just don't agree. There's a growing tension, literally, called the S8 tension, that's shaking the foundations of modern cosmology. So, what is this S8 tension? Think of the universe as this giant jigsaw puzzle made of matter, with some pieces clumped tightly and others spread out. Scientists want to measure how clumpy it all is, and we've got two methods for that. First, there are low redshift observations, basically looking at the nearby universe using a phenomenon called weak gravitational lensing. That's when massive objects like galaxies or black holes bend and magnify the light coming from behind them, helping us see otherwise hidden cosmic structures. Then there's the second method, using the cosmic microwave background, the ancient light left over from when the universe was a cosmic baby, just 380,000 years old. That method comes from the standard model of cosmology. But guess what? The two approaches give different results. And that, folks, is the S8 tension, our second major cosmological headache right after the Hubble tension. So what's going on? Well, to find out, scientists fired up one of the most powerful supercomputers on Earth and ran the biggest cosmological simulation ever attempted. We're talking over 50 million hours of processing time on 30,000 processors, all on the DRAC Cosma 8 supercomputer in the UK. The project is called, get this, Flamingo. Full hydro, large-scale structure simulations with all sky mapping for the interpretation of next-generation observations. Yeah, the name's a mouthful, but the goal was clear. Map out the universe in absurd detail. Now here's what makes Flamingo different. Most previous simulations only dealt with dark matter because let's face it, that's what the universe is mostly made of. But Flamingo said, hold on, let's not forget about ordinary matter like gas, stars, black holes, and all the fun stuff. Even though normal matter is only about 20% of the total, it plays a huge role. 
especially on smaller scales. Take galactic winds, for instance. Those powerful outflows from supernovae or supermassive black holes can actually prevent galaxies from growing. And Flamingo factored all that in. It did an amazing job simulating the formation of galaxies like the Milky Way and Andromeda. But here's the kicker. It still couldn't solve the S8 tension. In other words, even the most detailed simulation we've ever run, one that includes the effects of dark matter, normal matter, black holes, and galactic physics, still predicts more clumping than what we actually observe. Our model says galaxies should be 7% more clustered, and even Flamingo's improved version only drops that to about 5% more clustered. Still wrong. And here's where things really heat up. The Webb telescope has come in swinging. Not only has it confirmed Hubble's earlier findings, it's made the Hubble tension worse. Webb took another look at those distant galaxies and said, yeah, Hubble was right. The universe is expanding faster than the standard model says it should. So now we've got two major problems. One, the theory universe is more clumpy than simulations suggest it should be. Two, pleasure's expanding faster than our models allow for. <sighs> These are not tiny issues we can sweep under a cosmic rug. They're giant red warning signs flashing in bold letters. Something's not adding up. Now here's the wild part. Measurement errors have been pretty much ruled out. The numbers have been double and triple checked. So what's left? The thrilling and slightly terrifying possibility that we've misunderstood the fundamental nature of the universe. Some scientists are now pushing radical new ideas. What if dark matter doesn't behave the way we think it does? Or what if it doesn't exist at all? Others are calling for new physics, theories that go beyond Einstein and everything we've built our cosmological models upon. So, <laughs> What do you think? Is the universe playing a trick on us? Have we built a beautiful model on the wrong assumptions? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear what you believe is going on in this ever more mysterious universe. And don't forget to subscribe.